وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to a brand new segment in this course on the Muslim family. This section that we're going to be talking about is all about the parents. And there is no doubt, no doubt whatsoever that this is the greatest of all of the rights after the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no right greater than the right of the parents after the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that would have suggested that perhaps we should have put this at the beginning of the course. But we structured the course uh, chronologically going through uh, the beginning of creation, Adam and Hawa, marriage and then children. And then the child is brought up to treat the parents well. Uh, and so in terms of chronology, that's why we, we reach Birr al-Walidain towards the end of the course. And what we're going to talk about today is this whole concept of Birr al-Walidain. We hear this word a lot. And we also hear frequently the word Ihsan. وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا So let's start by looking at the linguistic meaning and the Islamic understanding of Birr al-Walidain and al-Ihsan ilayhima, being good to them and having birr towards them. So let's have a little look at what this means in terms of the language and in terms of the Islamic uh, definition. So the word birr, linguistically, uh, the, the verb itself, it can be used for salaha, can be used for ata'a, can be used for saddaqa. So it can refer to as-sidq, as-salah, الطاعه الخير الصله and so on so it can be used to refer to truthfulness or being true towards someone and it can be used for obedience the word albir meaning الطاعه and it can be used for انواع الخير all of the types of good and uh, goodness towards someone, al-fadl, grace towards someone. And it can be used for as-sila, keeping ties with someone. These are some of the linguistic meanings around the word al-birr. And the person who who has that attribute, they are called barrun or they are called barrun. Either bar or bar and the plural being abrar or barara. And the angels are called barara. Kiramin, barara. So the angels are described with this characteristic of albir. Uh, here referring to their obedience and referring to the, the, the good, that they only do good. So they're described with this term Al-Barara, because of their ta'a, their obedience to Allah, their khair and the good that they do. So this is a general word, and it's one of the most comprehensive words that you can, you can see. Even in terms of its usage in the Qur'an, it's a very com comprehensive word that covers all kinds of good. And that's why uh, Al-Raghib Al-Asfahani uh, ta'ala, he said that al-birr is at-tawassu' fil khayri wa ta'a. He said it is to go, to, to be expansive, to be vast in goodness and obedience. He said it is at-tawassu' to really, you know, go to a large extent in al-khayr, in goodness, and in al-ta'a, in obedience. And that's why Al-Munawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, وَبِرُّ الْوَالِدْ He said that bir as it relates to the walid, as it relates to the, the parent, is at tawassu' fil الْإِحْسَانِ ilay. It is to really go to the utmost extent in ihsan towards 
that parent. وَتَحَرِّ مَحَابِّهِ And to really seek out everything that they love. وَتَوَقِّ مَكَارِهِ And to keep yourself away from everything that they would dislike. وَالرِّفْقُ بِهِ And to be soft and gentle with them. وَضِدُّهُ الْعُقُوقِ And the opposite of it is الْعُقُوق so we see how vast this word is and how vast this concept of birr al-walidain is that the word birr, it indicates at-tawassu' fil ihsan even lughatan, linguistically at-tawassu' fil khair, at-tawassu' fil ihsan being very vast and really going to the utmost extent in good, in ihsan and we're going to come to that word in a moment in al ta'a in obedience, in al-khayr, in goodness. And he gave examples of that. He said that you are seeking out everything that person loves. Everything that parent loves, you're looking for it and seeking it and trying to achieve it across every spectrum. This is something worse here. It's very expansive. So in every single area of their lives and your life, you're seeking to do what they love. And you're keeping yourself away and being careful to protect yourself from anything they would dislike. I'm not talking about something necessarily has to be haram. Anything they would dislike. Being soft to them. And being kind to them. In speech, in mannerisms, in the way, even in the way that you disobey them. It is obligatory for the Muslim to have a rifq with the walid, with the parent, even in the way that you disobey them, even when you have to, obligatory, uh, it is obligatory upon you and you have to disobey them in Islam, you do so with al rifq and al-ihsan, with goodness and kindness and gentleness. And he also told us at Munawi that the opposite of uh, al-birr is al uquq is to be bad to your parents and this is among the worst of the major sins and we're going to hear some of the evidences for this. So this, uh, the word al-birr as we heard from these definitions is ismun jami' It is a comprehensive word and it covers uh, al-kalamu wal-fi'lu wal-mal hatta ma fil qalb It covers how you speak, how you behave it covers how you spend your money and, and, and spending upon them. And it even covers what is in the heart, how you feel towards them and the love that you have for them, the care you have for them and the priorities that you have for them, the way that you they come first in your heart. This even, this comes under the word al-birr. So it is a very comprehensive uh, concept. And Al-Mawardi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, Al-Bir'u naw'an, silatun wa ma'roof. He said that Bir is of two types generally, the word not necessarily related to Bir al-Walidayn. He said, Sila, uh, and this refers to wealth, and Ma'roof, which refers to Al-Qawlu wal-Amal. So we're talking about things you say, things you do, and even the spending of wealth, al-Infaq, and we're also talking about al-umur al-qalbiyya, the matters of the heart. All of this comes within the topic of al-birr. As for al-ihsan, then al-raghib al-asfahani rahimullahu ta'ala, he said, uh, al-husn ibara an kulli manhajin marghubin fi. He said that the word, the ha and the seen and the noon here, refer to everything, every way which is desirable, every desirable thing or every desirable uh, way of doing something, it can be referred to with this word al-husn or al-ihsan. Well, ihsan yuqalu ala wajhain. He said that there are two ref or two uh, meanings, broad meanings for the word ihsan. أَحَدُهُمَا الْإِنْعَامُ آه الْإِنْعَامُ عَلَى الْغَيْرِ وَالثَّانِ إِحْسَانٌ فِي فِعْلِهِ وَذَلِكَ إِذَا عَلِمَ عِلْمًا حَسَنًا أَوْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا حَسَنًا He said, Ihsan can be referred to two things. One is to 
give more to someone, give extra to someone, or to 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 bless, you know, to to bless someone. I in inam to give someone more than what they more than what they would expect, or more than what they would uh, that then would be like a, a what they deserve, or would be like a one for one. So you, this is what you say about to go beyond and to go further than the expectations. So this is the, one of the meanings of ihsan towards someone, that, that to, to go beyond and to exceed the expectations and to give them more than they give you. And the second is to, to have ihsan, i.e. to perfect an action. When someone learns some knowledge which is, is good and does an action which is good, we say to them, ahsanta. Ahsanta, you did you did something good. So to perform an action which is complete and good, and to give someone more than what they would expect. These are two of the meanings or two of the primary meanings behind the word uh, behind the word ihsan. And Raghab al Asfahani uh, he said, Rahimahullah ta'ala. Regarding the statement of Allah Azza wa Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan Indeed Allah commands al-adl Which is justice He said rahimahullah ta'ala Fal-ihsanu fawqa al-adl Wa thalika anna al-adl huwa an yu'ti ma alayhi wa ya'khudhu ma lahu Wal-ihsan an yu'ti akthara mimma alayhi Wa ya'khudhu aqalla mimma lahu He said that is because al-adl, justice, is a person taking what or giving what they have to give and taking what they have what, what is theirs to take. But ihsan is to give more than what they have to give and to take less than what they have to take. And we're going to see both meanings of ihsan as it relates to ihsan ila al-walidayn. We're going to see this concept, even especially when we come to talk about Birr al-Walidayn among the Salaf al-Salih, rahimahullah ta'ala. You see them going to an extent of Birr al-Walidayn that a person, subhanAllah, can't, it's hard to even imagine. It's hard to even imagine. And you also see across all of the, the, the stories and the examples that we're going to bring, inshaAllah ta'ala, the, the striving for excellence and perfecting that particular ibadah that is an ibadah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the high, at the highest standard. So both of these are meanings of the word ihsan. And also while we're talking about meanings, it's also important to talk about the word al-walid. And that's because from among the people of knowledge are those who say that al-walid, it doesn't just limit itself to your parents. Rather, it includes your parents and all of the ascendants above them. So your grandparents and your great grandparents, because all of them linguistically come under the uh, come under the, the title Al-Walid or given the name Al-Walid, that is the father and the grandfather. So likewise, we want to make people understand that even though no doubt the parent, the mother and the father have that special place in Islam, the, there is also birr al-walidayn that has to be done towards the grandparents and the great-grandparents as well, if they are still alive, that that, that, that isn't excluded from the concept of birr al-walidayn, because the walid is the father or the parent, in ala, and all of those who go upwards, all of them who go upwards. And inshallah ta'ala, later on we're going to come to talk about the relatives and that's another segment, the issue of uh, ulul arham, the people who are related to you, your relatives. We're going to talk about that inshallah ta'ala uh, a bit later on in the in the course inshallah. So let's come on to talk about birr al-walidayn in the Qur'an. Birr al-walidayn in the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا وَبِذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَالْجَارِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِ الْجُنُبِ وَالصَّاحِبِ بِالْجَنْبِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَمَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُكُمْ This is Surah An-Nisa, ayah number 36. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Worship Allah and do not make any partner with him and be good to your parents. 
Subhanallah, first of all, Allah Azza wa Jal begins the ayah with his haqq, his right. Wa'budullah. This is the right of Allah Azza wa Jal over his servants. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Mu'adh, Atadri ma haqqullahi ala al-ibad wa ma haqqul ibadi ala Allah. Do you know what the, root, the right of Allah is over his servants and the right of the servants is over Allah? Qala khultu Allahu wa rasooluhu a'lam. He said Allah and his messenger know best. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Haqqullahi ala al-ibad an ya'buduhu wa la yushriku bihi shay'a. The right of Allah over his servants is they worship him and they don't make any partner with him. This is the greatest of all the huquq. And this is the religion of Islam and it is al-urwatul wuthqa, the trustworthy handhold that will never break. And it is the meaning of la ilaha illallah. Wa'budullah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. Worship Allah and don't make any partner with him. But look at how Allah Azza wa Jal joined between his right and the right of the parents to show you that there is no right, there are no huquq, there is no right or no rights on the face of this earth or in this religion of Islam greater than the right of the parents after the right of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this also benefits us that when there is a ta'arud, a contradiction, between the rights of Allah and the rights of the parent, the rights of Allah come first. The rights of Allah come before everything and everyone else. But after the right of Allah Azzawajal, there is no greater right than the right of the parent. ihsana, And to your parents do good. Now here the word walidain, the two parents, it covers the father and the mother. And it covers the two of them uh, together and we're going to hear in other ayat about the fact that the right of the parents is not only when they are together even when they are separate the right is each one of them still has their right but here it doesn't limit the walidain to al-walidain al-muslimain the two muslim parents it is general and that's why we're going to hear also later on that there is no specific ruling about limiting this to the muslim however the muslim is, has an additional right over you. The right of the parent and the right of Islam and, the, and so on. But even the parent that is not a Muslim, we're going to hear inshallah ta'ala as we move through the ayat and the ahadith, that even the parent that is not a Muslim still has that right over you. And Allah Azza wa said, Ihsana. To your parents do Ihsan. And we've heard Ihsan is to uh, have excellence in every way that you deal with them. That every aspect, and we said al-qawl, al-fi'l, al-infaq, uh, al-umur al-qalbiyya, the, the things you say, the things you do, the money you spend, the affairs of the heart, all of it towards your parents should be ihsan. It should be at the highest standard of what Islam expects from you. Rather, the word ihsan also indicates going Beyond, in Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah commands justice and He commands ihsan, al adl, to do what you have to do and al ihsan to go beyond what you have to do. And you see from the understanding of the Salaf al Salih, rahimahumullah ta'ala, that, that which makes it crystal clear that they understood that a person should go beyond even the, the, the basic kind of things that you would expect a child to, go, to do for a parent. So you find one of them would put his face on the ground and tell his mother, stand, put your feet upon my, rest your feet upon my cheek. Subhanallah. And this, this is not by any means the most emphatic example among the actions of the Salaf rahimahumullah ta'ala. So you are commanded to have excellence in every single aspect of the way you deal with your parents. Everything, from the way you speak to them, the things you do for them, the things you don't do, because they asked you not to do them, your obedience to them, because we said al-birr, it covers al-ta'a, obedience, and the way that you spend, and the way that your heart is towards them, and your softness to, in all of these, you should have excellence. And then you should aim to go even beyond what they would expect. And that is why when we talked about the definition that was given earlier on, we talked about taharri, 
تحري محبي that a person actually actively seeks out the things that make their parents happy and instinctively knows وتوقي مكارههم and instinctively knows the things that make their parents sad the person it's not ihsan for the parent to have to ask the child to do something this is al adl this is you know fairness the parent says bring me a glass of water and the child brings the parent a glass of water هذا هو العدل this is al adl but it's not al ihsan this is not what allah azza wa commanded Al-ihsan is that you bring your parent the water before they ask for it. That's ihsan. You bring it to them before they ask for it. Because you are actively searching out the things that they like. You know what they need before they have to ask for it. For Allah, if they have to ask for it, this is a taqseer fi haqqil walid. This is deficiency as it relates to the right of the parent. And it doesn't come under the full meaning of the word Ihsan. The full meaning of the word Ihsan would indicate that you give your parents what they want and what they need and you avoid what they dislike before they even say the words. That's what Ihsan is. So yes, Ihsan is to excel, that you're obedient, that when you when they tell you to do something, you do it and so on. But it's more than that. It's also about being ahead of what they ask you to do and actively looking that what would make my mom happy today what would make my dad happy today what would my mom dislike from the things that I'm doing wallah even if they didn't say because some of the parents subhanallah maybe they they have haya they're too shy to say to their children that something they don't like so they maybe keep it quiet maybe they keep it inside of themselves So a person actively thinks, what am I doing that I know maybe I feel that my parents wouldn't like? And even those things they leave. And the word Ihsan here in the ayah is general. It's not, there's no particular kind of Ihsan specified because this is Am, it's a Kalim which is Amma, it's general for every kind of action. And that's why Allah well, didn't specify it. He didn't say, a kind of ihsan وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا you know for example in what you say in what you do uh, or ihsanan in the way you treat them rather this is from the most generic of terms it covers and we said like the word ihsan the word albir these are kalimat jami'ah these are words and phrases that are completely general and cover literally every single thing in the spectrum وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And that's why it was kept general. وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى And to your relatives. وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ Till the end of the ayah. Look at the system of the organization of the society in Islam. What a beautiful system. This can only be a system which came from the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Because there's this the way this is organized. Wallah, this ayah on its own is enough for a person to accept Islam. If this is the only ayah they had. Because if you see, subhanAllah, how Allah Azza wa Jal organized the society, everyone getting their rights. First of all, the right of Allah. Our society, our mujtama is built upon the rights of Allah before everything and anyone else. Then the right of the parents. And they're the most deserving of the people of you fulfilling their rights. And then the relatives, each one of them, according to how near they are. Each one of them according, so their brothers, the sisters, the uh, uncles and the aunts, and then outwards to the cousins, and then outwards and outwards. And looking after the atama and the miskin, the orphan, who doesn't have, perhaps, they don't, they, the orphan is the one that uh, their father passed away before they reached the age of puberty. And maybe some of them, perhaps their mother even passed away as well. And they don't have the, the walid to, to, to look after them and take care of them and protect their interests. And the miskin, the one who is so poor that they have, they've been afflicted by al-maskana, yani they're, they're destitute. And the al-jar dil-qurba, the neighbor that is a relative of yours, wal-jar al-junub, and the neighbor that is not a relative of yours, 
or sahibi bil jamb, and the one that works with you or is next to you in travel or at your workplace or in your school, weban is sabil, and the one who is cut off from their, their wealth. And they might be wealthy, but they're traveling and they don't have access to it. Wama malakat imanukum, even the people who are enslaved. SubhanAllah, look at the way Islam gave rights to all of them, each one of them organized in a perfect organization. Each one of them given the rights that they have to be given. Give everyone who has a right over you their right. So a person should be grateful to Allah for this religion of Al-Islam and they should recognize the perfection and the wisdom. Hikmatun baligha, an infinite wisdom that exists. In the next episode, we're going to continue on insha'Allah ta'ala to talk about the Birrul uh, Walidain in the Quran. And inshallah, perhaps we can move on a little bit to Birr al-Walidain in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's what Allah made easy for me to mention. And Allah knows best. Wa salatu wa salam ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.